so this little sort of presentation is um, various um, recollections and, and sort of um, details about how the Queen's coronation was celebrated in 1953. Um, if you're interested in, in the pictures um, that you can see just there, you've actually got um, Her Majesty on Coronation Day, rather a nice sort of smiling portrait taken of her then. And then the picture on the right hand side is a more recent um, photograph of her actually visiting Morden to open one of the, the um, latest developments of the Hague homes in this, this particular area. Um, so I'll start talking to you a little bit about um, the sort of how the coronation was celebrated locally with our heritage um, centre and local studies centre collection. We've got quite a few different um, documents and pieces of memorabilia about the coronation, um, more about Merton and Morden and Mitcham in terms of actual souvenir programmes than Wimbledon. Unfortunately, we've got a lot of sort of newspaper material from the, the sort of Wimbledon area. So some of the um, information I'm going to give you um, in this talk is sort of based on that. So without further ado. Um, George VI, the Queen's beloved father, um, died on the 6th of February 1952. The slide that you can see here is actually one of his last um, public appearances. That was when um, the King, Queen Elizabeth and Princess Margaret actually um, went to London Airport on the 31st of January to actually um, see um, Princess Elizabeth as she then was and Prince Philip depart for a tour of Australia, um, during which they actually stayed, stopped off in Kenya. Um, and it was at that point, um, they'd not long arrived in Kenya actually when the King sadly died. And that really took the nation by surprise. Um, there was great mourning because he was only 56 years old. Um, I think some of those pictures actually look somewhat older because of the, the sort of ravages of, of sort of illness on him. Um, so died sadly of coronary thrombosis. Um, and the Queen hurriedly, the, the new Queen hurriedly had to return home from Kenya. This is a picture of her and Prince Philip arriving back in England a few days afterwards. And from the 9th of February for two days, George VI coffin rested in St Mary Magdalene Church in Sandringham before lying in state at Westminster Hall from the 11th of February. And there was great public sorrow at the loss of a, of a monarch, much love for his personal courage, having risen to the challenge of be unexpectedly becoming king following his brother's abdication. And also in spite of his personal fears and suffering from a severe stammer, which he had to sort of overcome to fulfill that role. And people were also particularly grateful to him for the dedication, determination and leadership that he'd shown through the war years. So following the, the death of the king, local dignitaries gathered on the steps of local town halls around Merton to announce the death of the king and to proclaim the accession of Elizabeth II. Here you can see Councillor Madgwick, the mayor of Mitcham, um, flanked by the local MP, just standing just to his um, right there or left in the picture, as you can see. That was Robert Carr um, proclaiming the accession of um, Queen Elizabeth II. And king George's funeral took place at St George's Chapel, Windsor Castle on the 15th of February. And newspapers and cinema re newsreels showed striking images of the funeral service, including the one that you can see on the right hand side, which shows three queens together united in mourning. Um, on the far left hand side there, you can see um, the new young queen Elizabeth II. In the centre, you have her grandmother, George's mother, um, Queen Mary, and um, Queen Elizabeth, later the queen mother on the right hand side there. Um, the king was initially interred in the royal vault until he, and his body was later transferred to the King George VI Memorial Chapel at Windsor on the 26th of March, um, and that was in 1969. It was transferred several years later. After the hardships of World War II, the 1950s were seen as a new beginning. The 1951 Festival of Britain had already given a glimpse of what the future could hold for Britain. This was a celebration of colour, culture and new technology. And the young queen's accession was seen as the dawn of a new era, bringing hope of progress and prosperity for all. Planning began in earnest for events to mark the coronation scheduled to take place at Westminster Abbey on the 2nd of June in 1953. Coronation celebration committees were set up across Merton, which with much support from the local clergy and community organisations. Services of Thanksgiving were held in parish churches, Coronation souvenirs were distributed to local school children and the council also announced that prizes would be issued for the best decorated shops and gardens. So I'm going to give you a few more details now about how things were celebrated in the Merton and Morden Urban District Council. That was one of our predecessor authorities prior to the um, creation of the London Borough of Merton in 1965. So on the 30th of March 1953, the esteemed members of Merton and Morden Urban and District Council resolved to present a loyal address to Her Majesty under the common seal of the council. And you can see, see that particular address here. 
Um, so just reading out the humble, loyal and dutiful address of the Urban District Council of Merton and Morden. May it please your majesty, we the chairman and members of the Urban District Council of Merton and Morden on our own behalf and on behalf of the inhabitants of Merton and Morden desire to tender our loyal and sincere congratulations on the occasion of your majesty's coronation. We pray that your majesty's reign may be long, happy and prosperous, ever maintaining the best traditions and principles of your royal ancestors and the honour of your majesty's crown and that your majesty may long be spared to reign over a united, loyal and peace loving people. Most celebrations in the local area were to be focused on Morden Park and this is a picture of um, an item in our collection. This is the um, souvenir uh, coronation souvenir produced by Merton and Morden Urban District Council in 1953 um, and that was sold for the grand sum of a shilling. It was produced by the Morden Press and half the proceeds from sales were actually split between Merton and Morden Children's Camping Association and a charity to be nominated by the council. Then during coronation week itself um, this, sorry, this is just to give you an idea of some of the sort of programme event, of events that you can see there. So it runs right through from sort of May to, to July and actually on into August. Um, so everything from sort of carnival parades and competitions to torchlit ceremonies, television broadcasts, concerts and so forth. And in Coronation Week itself, local scouts were also selling the official coronation programme that you can see just here, which was actually published by the King George Jubilee Trust and the National Playing Fields Association. In his message to local residents, the chairman of the council, G.H. Randolph Martin, declared the coronation an event of outstanding importance to the nation, recognising that local residents would want to enjoy to the utmost such ceremonies and celebrations as are associated with the crowning of our Queen share to the full the deep religious significance of the coronation ceremony and join in spirit our young queen as she makes her obligations. Local streets were, were heavily decorated with flags, bunting and colourful flower baskets along local streets, including London Road. And one of the earliest celebrations involved this site, this is Chessington Zoo, where courtesy of us, the, the, the kindness of the management, 500 Merton and Morden school children were, were entertained on the 16th of May and had a sort of free trip around the zoo and its attractions. Another of the celebration items involved the, the um, award of the current title Coronation Carnival Queen. And this was given to Miss Shirley Isles that you can see here, who was publicly crowned as the Carnival Queen of Merton and Morden by the chairman of the local council. And that ceremony took place at the Odeon in Morden. That's um, at the, the junction of sort of London Road and Aberconway Road. Um, and presents were given to her and her, her attendants, Miss Knight um, and Miss Martin. On Sunday the 31st of May at 11 a.m. Merton Parish Church hosted a civic service. There were also local services throughout the day and similar services held at other parish, parish churches across Merton. But this is actually um, a united service held at three o'clock at Morden Park and that was arranged by the local clergy. That was actually preceded by what they call a procession of witnesses. That's representatives from local churches, scout and guide groups and so forth who processed from local churches to Morden Park. And choirs from local churches and local choral societies were also in attendance, directed by the Vicar of Merton, Reverend Renshaw, and supported by the Band of the Salvation Army. And these services contained a whole mixture of um, blessings, hymns, thanksgivings, the, plus the national anthem, of course. Now, historically, the, the 1953 coronation was, was a, a moment in history because it was the first coronation ceremony to be televised. Several of you have spoken about memories of that. Um, and on Tuesday, the 2nd of June, um, television broadcasts of the coronation were shown throughout the day at Merton Public Hall. Invitations were actually sent out to, to elderly local residents um, and broadcasts were also organised for patients of Nelson Hospital. At 10 o'clock on Coronation Day, there was a torchlight procession of scouts and guys that went from Central Road, Hillcross Avenue and Martin Way to light a beacon fire organised by the National Trust and the Scouts Associations at Morden Park, followed by a local sing-song. And then on Wednesday, the 3rd of June, there was a sports, sports meetings held in Mostyn Gardens, Martin Way um, for primary and secondary schools and also at various other sort of sporting locations. Here you can see the St Helier District Sports event. Um, so you had a, an earlier event for primary um, and secondary schools with events like the 800 and 100 yards, hurdles, javelin, discus and the high jump, as well as relay races. And then a similar event in the evening for senior athletes um, had things like the 100 to 880 yard races, obstacle races, re relay races and cycling events. 
Then on Thursday, the 4th of June, a concert and tea party was held for local elderly residents. Um, similar events were held at Merton Public Hall, the British Legion Hall in Newminster Road, St Saviour's Church in Rain Park, Morden Assembly Rooms, St John Fisher Hall and Cannon Hill Lane with transport laid on. And it was also an event to be commemorated um, in a physical sense with lots of souvenirs. Um, these are some of the sort of local children, lots of street parties in the local area as well. This is Coronation Party from Peterborough Road on St Helier Estate. I love the faces of these little ones. Um, sugar rationing had come to an end, so there was sort of much consumption of, of sort of cakes and ice creams and various sort of treats and so forth to celebrate the coronation. Now, some of these little ones would have been amongst the ones that have been given special souvenirs. So on the 4th and 5th of June, um, souvenirs were presented to over 11,000 local school children. So that might be a coronation cup, saucer and plate. Um, Mitchum presented children with a coronation beaker. Um, and older children were also given a copy of the coronation book written by William Lahardy. On the 5th of June, there was open air dancing in, in Morden Park during the evening. And then there was a sort of major event on the 6th of June, um, which was a carnival parade um, that was actually staged, um, led by Chief Parade Marshal Captain Trustum OB, with a float for the Carnival Queen provided by Councillor Walker and the local nurseries. And these were some of the sort of um, certificates that were actually given um, for some of the other sort of sports events and, and for, for particular um, presentation souvenirs so saving certificates obviously after the war a lot of sort of um, emphasis placed on rebuilding and saving to support the country and so forth so these little sort of souvenir certificates that you can hit, see here were actually presented to, to various people and they ranged from um, three shillings and 15 pence to a value of 10 pounds and 10 shillings for, for some of the other sort of um, races and um, carnival floats and so forth. And there was a, later a performance, a coronation um, concert performance of a show called Merry England at Merton Public Hall by the Morden Park Choral Society. This was a particularly popular show during sort of coronation year, full of lots of sort of patriotic songs and so forth. Um, in this instance, you had Phyllis Bennett, the local soprano, Muriel Darton, who was a contralto, Arthur, Arthur Chilcott, Chilcott, who was a local baritone, and Albert Hurl, who was a tenor. And then on Sunday, the 7th of June, you saw the inaugural performance. Um, oh, sorry, I should go back to this one slide. I should emphasize that local firms um, and businesses were particularly keen to emphasize their patriotism and to make the most of, of sort of coronation week and the sort of associated events. So this is actually an advert that was placed in one of the sort of local papers by the Crown Inn, which stood where the Merton Civic Centre now stands, proclaiming health and happiness to, to the new Queen. So just going back a bit, um, on the Sunday, the 7th of June, you had the inaugural performance at the new bandstand at Morden Park. This is one of a number of facilities that the council paid to be constructed as a sort of lasting legacy of the, the coronation. Um, so it hosted its first band performance on Sunday, the 7th of June, by, with a performance from the band of the Irish Guards. And then, as you can see from the advert um, from the programme on the right hand side, there were performances then each Sunday until the 30th of August by military bands, everyone from the Irish Guards and the Coldstreams to the Royal Horse Guards, the Scots and Lifeguards and also the Welsh Guards Band. Um, there were also um, various performances of a film directed by Sir Lawrence, or no, directed and narrated by Sir Lawrence Olivier called A Queen is Crown. This proved very popular at various local cinemas and special early morning screenings were actually stayed, staged at Morden Odium, which stood where you now have the sort of Iceland and Lidl um, stores um, in Morden Town Centre. And this was actually, performances were actually staged for local elderly and disabled residents. You also on Saturday the 20th of June had a special coronation ball at the drill cop hall at Stonecott Hill organised by members of the local territorial army. And then there was the judging of gardens competitions um, um, on the 6th and the 11th of July. Local residents were very much encouraged to make a, a special effort to make patriotic displays in their front and back gardens and silver cups were awarded for the best entries. The council also in a sort of horticultural vein opted to undertake projects that would permanently be associated with the coronation year. So trees were planted at Morden Hall Road and also Tudor Drive by the council chair. And this is another facility that was open. This is the paddling pool at Morden Park. There's also a boating pool for youngsters. And that was another of the sort of lasting legacies of the coronation. 
more horticultural produce um, was shown um, as a special sort of show by Merton and Morden Federation of Allotment Associations. So you had coronation fruit, fruit, flower and vegetable show. Here you can see some of the sort of displayed by the St Helier Horticultural Association. Um, and there was also a commemorative seat that was put in place in Kingston Road near Church Lane provided by the local Towns Women's Guild. So that's some of the sort of modern celebrations, um, a lot of sort of similarity, as you can imagine, with other parts of the borough. But I'll give you a few details about what, what happened in Mitcham next. So um, on Coronation Day, the 2nd of June, there's a special peal rung on the bells of the parish church. And there'd also been a, a sort of celebratory church service earlier in May. This picture that I'm showing you here actually shows some of the decorations um, for Coronation Week that were put up around Fair Green in Mitcham. Um, as I said, there was a special coronation service. The picture you can see on the left hand side is actually from an earlier coronation. That's from 1937. But you can see the a similar service was held to mark the Queen's coronation in 1953. And that right hand um, picture actually shows you some of the sort of programme associated with that. So again, the national anthem, various hymns, blessings and so forth. There was also um, uh, this is the coronation celebration program that's actually produced by the local council in Mitchams. Um, we have a, a number of those in our collection if people want to, would like to come and look at them at any point in time. Um, and on the morning and afternoon of Coronation Day, there was more. There were more televised services shown to members of the Derby and Joan clubs at Vestry Hall in Mitcham. That was then the, the sort of town hall for that local authority um, near the Cricket Green. The Methodist Mission Church, which is on High Street in Collier's Wood, and also St Olaf's Church. Um, and then in the evening on Mitcham's historic Cricket Green, there was a a happy day dancing display by members of the Roman and direct starlets. They gave 20 different performances. You can see the programme here, everything from putting on the Ritz and, and songs from Easter Parade to a Czech quartet, cabaret, ballet and tap performances culminating in the coronation rag. So a good time had by all. And then there was public open air dancing on the cricket green between 8 and 10 o'clock on coronation day, um, followed but on at 10.30 at Three Kings Peace by the local mayor lighting a coronation bonfire and there was also a firework display there as well. Um, on Wednesday the 2nd of June there was a whole series of singing, dancing and physical education displays by local school children from primary and secondary schools, everything from Greek and country dancing to Scottish dancing, displays of athletics, agility, vaulting and figure marching. And there was also a band um, performance by the band of the Royal Fusiliers playing everything from Colonel, Bo Colonel Bogey and a hunting we will go to extracts from the Pirates of Penzance. There were also um, arts and crafts exhibitions at the, the local vestry hall, the, the sort of town hall opened by the mayor and displays by local Mitchum brownies and guides, as well as an archery demonstration. Hopefully the audience sort of positioned at a safe distance from members of Mitchum Youth Club and the senior scouts. Um, followed by a concert, concert by the Capstan Youth Group. And appropriately given Mitcham's cricketing history, you had a, a special period cricket match, which was staged in co full costume. Um, this, is, this is a later picture on the right hand side here, you, but you can see the sort of program of the match, which was played between the old Disraelians and the old Keir Hardy. And so theoretically Labour versus Tories versus Labour. Um, all in the sort of costumes of 1853, so 100 years of cricket celebrated there. And other matches were also played between the, the Mitcham 11 and the team from Beddington, also the teams from Haywards Heath and the Spencers second 11. And that was later followed in the evening of the 5th of June by old time dancing. But the, the major celebration in Mitcham happened on, apart from Coronation Day itself, happened on Saturday the 6th of June, which was the Coronation Procession. Um, this is actually a, a sort of um, image showing you the route um, around um, the local area. It started at Three Kings Peace, travelling up to Mitcham Stadium via Commonside West, Cricket Green, London Road, Gorringe Park Avenue and Streatham Road. And these are some of the organisations that you can see taking part. So you can see some, some character people, so Mitcham's version of Charlie Chaplin. Lots of so local sort of cadet forces, the Boys Brigade, the ATC, um, the Army Cadets and so forth. You have local companies represented there. So, for example, T.W. Palmer was a sort of um, white metal manufacturer. You had various medical contingents. You had um, Young's Brewery was represented, sc dancing schools, local community associations and so forth. And I've got some pictures that I can show you of some of the participants. So there's Mitchum's Charlie Chaplin setting off from Three Kings Peace, um, followed by the members of the 70th Boys Band Brigade. 
Uh, this is the Mitcham May Queen with her attendants pictured on their sort of float just there. And this is um, traveling down um, London Road in Mitcham. So just in the background all decorated up, you can see Mitcham Library. So you've, you've got some of the sort of um, army cadets and so forth there. And this is some of the local guides and similar sort of view. I, I love this picture because if, especially if you look at the top left hand side, you've got some of the local little ones all dressed up in sort of family dress for their fancy dress for their sort of street parties and celebrations and so forth. And this is the mayor of Mitcham awarding first prize um, for the carnival parade, the, the sort of coronation procession parade to the Romany School of Dance for their parade entry. Um, and other prizes went to, um, this is a sort of float, um, there's a lot of sort of Elizabethan history um, associated with, with um, Mitcham in terms of Elizabeth I, so that was also represented at the coronation of Elizabeth II. Um, so this is a float produced by the Mitcham County Grammar Schools that won the first prize in the historical category. And you also had a similar prize which went to for the industrial contingent went to Young's Brewery. And this is the sort of, um, um, program for the, the grand entertainment it was, it was called at Mitcham Stadium near, near Sandy Lane. So all sorts of youth displays, athletics, relay races, obstacle courses. Um, you had um, the, a guard of honour from the Bembo Mitcham Sea Cadets, Army Cadets and the ATC. Um, you also had displays by various youth organisations. So a whole lot of sort of themes on the dedication of youth to service for the Queen, country and people in the new reign. And there were various six uh, side football um, events between Mitcham and Tooting versus Frinton Rovers. They also played a team from Wand Gas, so the sort of local gas corporation. Um, and then there was a sort of match between the winners of the first two matches. And these are some of the sort of torch bearers. Um, there was a sort of special torch bearers um, procession by representatives from local youth and sports groups where they, they pledged an Athenian oath um, to Her Majesty the Queen and sort of duty of service. And then that was followed by all sorts of um, activities, everything from sort of a pageant depicting cycling through the ages staged by Mitcham Cyclist Touring Club, model aircraft flying displays, um, physical education displays. Here you can see the East Surrey Boys Brigade at Mitcham Stadium. Horse riding races and obstacle races, a bit, bit of a sort of unusual <laughs> setup in that sort of scenario there. And you also had um, more um, film screening. So um, Elizabeth is Queen was another show that was um, shown at the Mitcham Majestic Cinema that stood roughly where you now, that now have the entrance to the pedestrian precinct on Fair Green. And every morning of Coronation Week, um, there were special screenings for older school children with shorter versions shown at the local primary schools. And the council also gave grants to Wilson Hospital, Cumberland Hospital, um, just off Birch's Close, and Woodlands Maternity Hospital in Colliers Woods to stage their own special coronation celebrations. And local parks also excelled in producing floral displays. So this is a wonderful example created at Tamworth Manor Recreation Ground. This must have taken thousands and thousands of plants, um, carefully tended by the local sort of parks department to produce this um, coronation symbol to celebrate the Queen's, Queen's coronation. So I'll give you a few more instances now of what happened in Wimbledon. So this was described, um, the, the Wimbledon celebrations were described as something to rival any held in the district's history. Um, the Mayor Sidney Black started off um, in May by staging a garden party at Canizaro Park um, and later a banquet at the Wimbledon Hill Hotel. Um, if you can just see this picture, this is um, Wimbledon Village and you can just see on the far left hand side there the, the Wimbledon Hill Hotel, which was used for quite a lot of prestigious events at the time. And it said that crowds gathered outside hoping to see Winston Churchill arrive following Sidney Black's second election as mayor. Winston was apparently a freeman of the borough, but he wasn't actually present at this event. However, 200 esteemed guests were, um, including the Lord Lieutenant of Surrey, General Sir Robert Haining, um, Sir Godfrey Ince, Leslie Hall Belisha, who lived locally and was an MP and a former Minister of Transport, and also Air Vice Marshal Savage. And the Mayor also visited local schools such as Dundonald School to give out coronation spoons and books to the local children. It's also worth um, bearing in mind that several local residents would have actually taken part in the coronation ceremony itself, either as part of the Guard of Honour or in this instance, this is the coronation choir that performed at Westminster Abbey and that actually included a number of choristers um, drawn from various Wimbledon churches. 
in late May, um, the Minister of Education, the Right Honourable Florence Horsburgh MP, also opened a new coronation hall at Ashcombe Road in Wimbledon, and that had been given by the local MP, um, Alderman Cyril Black, um, for youth and community use. Um, there was also a whole series of coronation football tournaments. Um, and then on the 1st of June, Wimbledon Philharmonic Orchestra gave a concert um, at the town hall, including a special coronation fanfare. Now, as some of you um, recalled, um, Coronation Day itself actually started with wet weather. Um, some of people's earliest reminiscences were with them sort of visiting through the drizzle to sort of go to the houses of friends and relatives to, to share in watching their bought or rented televisions to, to watch the coronation, um, official coronation ceremony in London. There are also a number of street parties and public celebrations at local recreation grounds at this time, including a vast children's event that was actually stayed at Cottenham Park, staged at Cottenham Park. Um, Wimbledon Town Hall also hosted uh, in their committee room suite special um, coronation procession screenings for elderly residents. Um, Mayor Black had actually set up at 6.30 in the morning himself to actually attend the procession in London and his sort of mace bearer and chauffeur recounts that even at seven o'clock in the morning traffic was five deep um, by the time they got up there. He obviously had to come back to Wimbledon later in the day to take part in local celebrations. Um, and Marlborough Hall, which was stood just behind um, Wimbledon Library, is now what's remembered or more familiar as, as the local reference library in Merton Art Space. Um, staged a whole series of events for um, housebound people. The local Red Cross entertained 55 normally housebound people aged between 8, 15 and 85, treating them to a television broadcast lunch. Um, guests were ferried in cars provided by the local charities and Ely's department store even, de department store even sent furniture vans um, to carry special settees so that everybody could be accommodated. And there were also a whole series of TVs set up in the Wimbledon Hill Hotel so that more local people could watch the ceremony. This is something that is particularly associated with the coronation celebrations in Wimbledon. There's a sort of tradition um, of staging a special ox roast on Wimbledon Common. Um, that one of the last ones of these that had actually been held in the local area was in 1902 for Edward VII's coronation. Um, and Mayor S Sidney Black was actually given special permission from the Ministry of Food. Um, remember, this is still some of the sort of um, remainders of rationing were in place in this time um, to actually purchase a, an ox from a farm in Shear in Surrey. And then the proprietor of the Wimbledon Hill Hotel was in charging the roasting arrangements. A special sort of spit um, system was set up on Rushmere on the edge of Wimbledon Common, not far from the local war memorial. And it took 10 hours from early in the morning to actually roast this sort of vast beast. Um, and the idea was that um, the mayor would actually um, cut the first slice um, and then various local chefs would actually cut the remainder, which would then be distributed um, to, to old folks' homes in the area. In fact, hundreds of people gathered to watch the, the first sort of slicing being done um, the beast had actually been mounted on a, a lorry so that everybody could get a better view of the event. And so many people had, had attended that it, it was the original intention was that 100 slices would be distributed to the crowd. But such was the clamour that this was number was greatly exceeded. In fact, four year old Kenneth Coombe of Dora Road in Wimbledon got the first slice, which was probably slapped between two slices of bread. And he happily munched it while sitting on his father's shoulders. Um, then local butchers and chefs um, dealt with the rest of the, the ox, which was sent to, to old people's homes in the area by Wimbledon Round Table. And there was then singing, dancing and fireworks, open uh, dancing at a fair in beautiful Canizaro Park with a giant marquee, music from the air ca army cadets. There was a special breaking of the flag ceremony by the sea cadets and also a salute by the territorial army mortar guns. And there was sort of flares over Wimbledon Common and that Wimbledon windmill was specially floodlit. There were also lots of street parties um, and screenings of coronation films at Marlborough Hall and local cinemas shown in, in cinema scope, so glorious technicolour for the first time for local people um, to be able to see this event. And, and these, I'll just finish off by showing you a, a few sort of rather hazy pictures of, of coronation street parties in the local area. So these ones show um, coronation celebrations in Wimbledon Chase. Lots of rather bemused little ones all in fancy dress there. And these are some of the pictures um, taken from the celebrations at um, Hardy Road um, in Wimbledon. So you can see the, the sort of bottom right hand picture there. You can see um, people making the most of the um, end of sugar ration. They've got a large cake. Um, the little ones are obviously look, looking forward to slicing up and lots of people in fancy dress 
um, celebrating there and there would have been singing and dancing at the end of that celebration as well. So there we go, folks, that's the, that's the end. Of